Kevin. Interesting development there. Peter Ducey, thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate that. Let's continue, meantime, the conversation about the Trump transition tonight with Fox News political analyst Giano Caldwell and former Los Angeles GOP vice chair, Daily Wire actor Siaka Massaqua. Uh, listen, guys, this is an interesting story for a number of reasons, most notably because every day there's a new angle to this transition. Uh, but I want to begin this segment by talking about the president's budding relationship or friendship with Elon Musk, fellow billionaire and someone who is obviously very supportive of the Trump uh, 2024 campaign. Listen to this sound and I'm going to get your reaction on the other side, Gianna. Now, I don't know if you've gotten to know Elon yet, but uh, he doesn't bring a chisel. He brings a chainsaw and we're going to be taking it to that bureaucracy. It's going to be a lot of fun. He went to Pennsylvania, the campaign, because he considered this more important than launching rockets that cost billions of dollars. Elon Musk. He probably isn't going to like this sort of pressure on him, both inside Mar-a-Lago and a social yeah. media campaign being mounted outside, because he doesn't want to look like he's in the service of Elon Musk. Donald Trump doesn't really want to look like his puppet. It's a, it's a curious thing, Gianna. You're talking about a couple of billionaires, a couple of big egos, but I think there is a friendship that is undeniable there. What say you about this budding relationship and or possible rift looking forward? No, there's no rift between Elon Musk and Donald Trump. Don, Donald Trump is glad to have his support. He's one of the most brilliant and consequential entrepreneurs of our time. We know that um, he spent over $200 million for Donald Trump's Campaign and he has a pact that's going to continue to do work outside of this this presidential election for 2024. They're looking at the midterms, uh, and then not only that, we got Doge, where he's going to actually offer services for free for the federal government and bring in brilliant people from across the country. This is a good thing, and the left is trying to divide as they normally do. Yeah, as they usually do, Siaka. You know what I like best about it? I think Gianna really hit the nail on the head when you talk about trying to shrink the size of the government, make it more efficient, more effective. Uh, this is right up Elon Musk's uh, alley here. I can't imagine that this could go south, and yet there are those who are trying to suggest or throw that out there. Uh, what say you? Well, you know, Trump being there today to be with Elon Musk is just an example of a, a forward-looking leader that we needed. If you look at most of his picks from J.D. Vance as vice president to Matt Gates as DOJ to, to you know, uh, Peter Hesse, we, we're seeing the fact that he's bringing in a new generation of leadership. And this is, this is what the left lied to us and tried to say they were doing. He's actually doing it. He's uplifting and he's upholding our geniuses. Just to remind the American people, look, in two years, we're going to be celebrating 250 years of this country's greatness. And while one side wants to see our hurdles and our, 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 our missteps as defining us, I think Trump and the administration, who he's putting together, is showing that, no, we're greater because of those, because we've gotten through, and this American experiment is far from over. But this is going to be right. a great celebration in uh, 2026. Uh, very quick, want to share this from Axios. Gianno, get your thoughts on it. Uh, the headline says, What Biden Can Do as a Lame Duck President. Very interesting because... Look, the guy's not even talking to the press right now, but there's still some things out there. Take a look at this, li at this uh, list here and quickly give me your thoughts, uh, maybe 15 seconds. Yeah, th th this is a non-starter. Joe Biden needs to go back to the beaches, which is where he's been for a majority of his presidency. Uh, let Donald Trump take over. Let's make America a country that we all believe is greater than it's ever been. You know what, Siaka, I, I look at USAID for Ukraine. Obviously, that's the big one. Infrastructure, confirming judges, uh, energy and climate projects, uh, pretty heady considering the brevity of time. You know, it looks like uh, Biden and the Democrats, uh, they got upset that they lost the game and now they're going to flip the table so that all the pieces fall on the ground and it's going to be up to Trump and his administration to clean it up. You know, I say they're, they're not going to stop doing what they're going to do. And you saw that Secretary Blinken said that, hey, we're going to send as much money as possible up until January 20th. And so uh, Elon and Vivek and Doge can't start quick enough. But, you know, like <laughs> everything else, guys, let's just be patient and be ready to uh, clean this thing up when, when, we're, when we get in. I have a feeling there are a lot of people out there that will agree with you. It's the sooner the better, right? Uh, Gianno and uh, Siaka, gentlemen, thank you so much. We appreciate your time thank tonight. You. We are back with the Nightcap crew, Matt Finn, Mark Meredith, Alexa Henning. So happy you're here tonight. Amber Dukes, Yaka Massaquois. Tonight's topic, controversial cabinet. 
As you know by now, a few of President Trump's cabinet choices have been under fire a bit recently, which got us to thinking, should he stand by his more controversial picks, for example, or should he just go ahead and find a replacement now to avoid, you know, a big showdown on Capitol Hill? And which nominees do you think won't make it over the finish line? And so with that, we want to dive right in. Let's begin with Mark. Uh, I would imagine we're nowhere close to anybody being changed out at this point, but I really I think he, Trump says a, as a loyal person, he's going to stick by everyone, and he should just do the victory to the end. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Amber, what say you? I think Trump should stick by them. Look, the American people deserve to have somebody in charge who's going to ask why the Army spends $80 buying a roll of duct tape, keep pushing through, force the Senate <laughs> to go along with it. I, it speaks volumes of how qualified these uh, nominees are, that the left and the Democrats are so afraid that their power is going to be taken. Definitely stick with it. Matt, well, how about you? I think Trump will obviously stick by his nominees, but maybe there are some understudies in play. And look, I don't envy any of these people. Your entire life being combed through, ultimately the Senate will decide. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's dive into our responses. This is from Bill. He says Trump will stick to his choices. I'm sure he has a backup plan. It's part of his art of the deal. Stephanie says they will all get confirmed. America has spoken. Love as Matt be the best. Only through a recess will he be confirmed. John adds his two cents. He says he has the right to pick his cabinet. They should all be confirmed. The more they fight, the more you know it's the right pick. Mark, definitely stand by them 100%. I think they'll all be confirmed, especially RFK. And Scott says he chose them. He should support them. Gates won't make it. The others will be fine. I suspect they'll all make it one way or the other. We'll all find out together very soon. And with that, thank you to the Nightcap crew, and we thank you for watching America's Late News, Fox News at Night. I'm Kevin Cork in Washington. Trace is back tomorrow. We will see you then.